Let's see what's the code. Okay, time to troubleshoot for oxygen sensors. So my oxygen sensors, uh, they seems to be uh, there seems to be having a problem on bank one for both sensor one and sensor two. Bank one would be the three first cylinder up front. Sensor one would be the one before the um, three catalysis, and uh, the uh, sensor two would be the one after. So looking here, we can see how it's made. Um, this trouble I have is uh, from start when the, it's a cold engine, so it seems to be the heater. So in order to be sure that I've got the wrong heater on it, if it's broken or something, I'm gonna try to measure the resistance on that uh, heater. Problem seems uh, to be that the uh, color of the wiring here on that wiring diagram doesn't match mine. So. Uh, I will try to go along. This uh, wire here seems to be red, even though it's not really written on it. And this one seems to be either uh, probably white. But I can check probably with uh, this one and the others. So in order to do so, we'll get on the car and uh, we'll see how we go. I have a couple of uh, things like that. Like this thing here, you can pin on the uh, sensor connector. Uh, when you want to check resistance, you have to unplug. Sensor needs to be free. Uh, it has to be standalone. So uh, that's uh, what we're gonna do now. So unplugging the uh, connector, the, the one up front is the one on my case for the uh, sensor one on the bank one. So this is the uh, connector here. I got six pin, but when you look on it. There's uh, really just five that uh, are used. One of them is probably interconnected from within the connector itself. So I'm um, gonna have to measure resistance from here, but uh, in order to make sure that I got the right thing, I'm gonna check if the red connector pin here, when it connects with this one, if it is um, receiving 12 volt. So in order to do so, oh, it might be five also, because uh, sometimes uh, uh, electronic on cars. So in order to do so, I'm going to connect to a ground with my uh, tester in volt, set the car on uh, at the uh, on position. So meaning you put the key and you push until you see all the lights getting on in there. So if I check here, the red one is the one below. So it's going to be the one below here at the bottom on the um, looking inside the connector would be the one uh on the low right so the one on the low right going with this thing here would be because it's going like that so it's going to be the one on the upper right corner because when you connect it it flips and it goes down so um the kind of juice you see is that i put a bit of uh the electric grease trying to hope it's going to make a good connection and it's obviously not making the trick so let's put the car on at on position and let's measure this thing. So the setup is a ground connector connected to the common, positive connected to the uh, pin that is red. I got 2.6 volt while this uh, car is at on. I got the same on the uh, other sensor if I check. Uh, for the power supply, so this is the same. So the red seems to be uh, the uh, supply of uh, electricity to the sensor. Once we confirm that uh, this would be the uh, supply of power, then we can check the. Uh, we can use the one uh, in which the uh, red connects meaning uh, the red one on the sensor connector so that's the pin we want to check with and now we're looking for which one is going to be the one with the uh, resistance so the best way to do that is to work with the no good uh, connector uh, or the no good sensor the one we know is good so we don't need to uh, leave the car on power now so let's get on it so now car uh, power has been shut down this was just for a check. Put it back in. So setup now is we are on the homes. So we uh, check 
obviously something that is uh, doesn't have any power to it so the one here is the red it's a bit hard to see but this one here the black and yellow connector spin on the uh, red and I found out that uh, if you skip one the one just beside here at the bottom would be um, the one that seems to be uh, going to the sensor this one is the one this one here this one here is connect to the one that doesn't have any pin out when you look behind the connector so it seems to be having 97.5 ohm so now I'm gonna check the same thing with the uh, connector of the faulty sensor so on this one I have 135.9 ohms so the resistance is a bit higher than it was on the other one um, that is not uh, cut uh, either sensor so the resistance is um, is still good okay so from under the car looking at the sensor um, when I look at the uh, supply connector you can see there's uh, some uh, different colors here on the back there's one that is orange on the orange I have uh, close to 12 volt then there is one yellow and there is another one that is like gray the gray one I have uh, about 4.4 volts and that is a reading I have on both uh, connectors so um, there's one that's got 0.4 volt and the other one is zero not on the female one sorry but on the uh, male ones so both sensors get supply with the same same thing okay looked at uh, where the orange connector connects with the other one to see which pin it is that we have to check so then looking at the the good sensor uh, once you know where the orange goes look uh, amongst the pins there are just three choices so my reading is in ohms. The good one reads uh, nine ohms. The faulty one reads about one mega ohms. So I replugged it, but uh, there's obviously a way too big resistance on that one. So one mega ohm for the faulty sensor, and uh, nine ohm for the good one. Okay, and. Uh in the process of fixing this uh, oxygen sensor problem so I'm under the car uh, this is the pipe that goes up front for the cylinder one to uh, three this is pre catalysis the oxygen sensor was uh, here connecting from above like that uh, I've been lucky enough that it was uh, to remove it that it was loose so maybe this is why it broke uh, maybe with the vibration the element on it broke so um, the uh, black wire uh, it's hard to see but the wire on this thing is black uh, in order to access that I removed the uh, under uh, engine the uh, splash cover both the front and the rear also I remove this bracket here and unplug the oxygen sensor from it both of them and the tool I used was a key wrench like that um, um, so basically this is what it is so I'm just uh, looking forward to put the new part in there it's very crowded space um, I guess if you cannot do it you have to remove this pipe that goes all the way back to the uh, muffler and then uh, you will have to remove this uh, bracket that's connected to the uh, there's a bracket here the plate that we see that connect to the um, transmission so hopefully you don't have to do that if you have the same thing as me hopefully you're lucky that it's loose take your time removing that thing 
make sure it's not gonna jam along the way even though it's loose problem is the wire you try to put the wire up above because otherwise it acts as a spring and uh, as you unscrew it tends to screw it back the reason I changed it uh, that I'm gonna change it is because of the resistance that was uh, faulty on it it was way too high uh, the one above I'm gonna wait to change it it's uh, about 35 45 ohms greater than the one four cylinder 46 so the one above would be sensor one bank one so the one that I'm replacing is sensor two bank one okay so install the new uh, sensor you can see the uh, The thing with this sensor is uh, when you want to install it in place, you got to make sure that uh, you're not going cross thread. So uh, the best way I found to do so is to uh, in between the nut here, in between the nut and the pipe, if you feel with your finger to make sure that the gap is even all around, you want to put the wire straight up. There's a kind of a room for it it's gonna help your life but still it's gonna hack as a spring so you want to start this thing by hand you don't want to use the tool as much as possible you might end up that you're gonna need after half a turn or one turn to go with a wrench if you're gonna do so you gotta go very gentle you're gonna be very sensitive if it blocks because you don't want to mess this thing because else you gotta take all of it out and uh, you don't want to have a crushed tread and a tread problem with that so once it's in then you also this uh, this black wire tends to roll around the uh, sensor and the uh, aluminum uh, shield around it so once in a while you have to so once in a while you have to unwrap it from around then uh, once it's done you want to take that clip here and you want to clip this is going on the side of the transmission okay it's going to go this way the uh, pin here on top is uh, going in one hole and the other one is the boat so you want to clip uh, this clip here that uh, clip that is up above clips with the new one the one four cylinder one two three after it's clipped then you want to bolt it the other one's going to be easier to access even though it's uh, plugged even though it's bolted in place so this is the next step and then just plug everything back together and it's going to be time to test this thing you cannot go wrong with the connectors there's uh, only one way they can go uh, and they connect here underneath the trans underneath the transmission you got this uh, rack here and these are the uh, connectors the other side of it this is to show you what it's like once everything's connected down there so with the bracket oxygen sensor going here plugged with this thing and to that connector right there Once it's uh, connected underneath, you want to uh, clear your codes. Once the codes are clear, you want to remove the key. You want to remove the key and plug this up. Start it to see if it's going fine. So far so good.
Okay, so uh, the other code uh, for the uh, bank one sensor one and uh, uh, oxygen sensor code came back. So in order to replace it, I had to remove the uh, vacuum uh, tanks. Uh, other than that, I had to remove, uh, right after that, I mean I had to remove the vacuum bracket here with the vacuum, sorry, the vacuum valve bracket. This thing here it goes along on the uh, exhaust uh, exhaust side. After that, I was able to remove this pipe, bringing air to the turbos. So uh, this one, the way I uh, took it out, I forget should... to mention I also took the uh, fan radiator fan out. All of these are shown in uh, other videos I shoot about the. Uh, engine removal if you look in the steps you'll find it so the way to take out this pipe going to the turbo is uh, first of course you need to unplug it at the bottom there's a rag there but uh, from the intercooler at the bottom right there after that you remove the two collars you remove it like that and then you're able to it's not easy easy but you're going to be able to take it uh, upward so tilt it back Go upward be careful that the big part that connects to the uh, intercooler is not going to damage either the intercooler or the radiator other thing around of course is removing the uh, engine now cover the tool i used i used to have a box like that special for oxygen sensor uh, unfortunately this one doesn't work because the uh, two sensors for uh, bank one and bank two are like in a point so one like that the other one like that so the socket won't pass so got to get myself one of these it's like an oxygen sensor special tool this uh, here in fact is two um, ratchet uh, square hookups it's just that they're shifted one from another so uh, that gives you more angles that you can play with so that was uh, the tool I took to uh, use it you got to be also taking in consideration that if your tool is like that and your leverage is like that then you're losing uh, leverage because you're pivoting against uh, against that point here so this is basically what it was so then it's a matter of just going around again with the wiring all around the engine from the back hook up that thing and uh, so this is what I'm doing now I'm in the process of uh, rebuilding this whole thing uh, this thing here also when you take it out this uh, little uh, wire when you take this out from the top of the fan you gotta grab it very close to where it clips that's gonna prevent you from breaking that hose so this is mainly what it is so once you're done erase the codes okay then remove the key Remove the connector, OBD2, push the key in, start this. So codes should be fine. 